Hello, it's Clan Dan here and welcome to another episode of AI Board where we talk to you about all things to do with the AI board game. In this video we're going to show you exactly how to play the board game. We will break down the key rules including how the scores are calculated. We will also show you how to navigate using the various tools available on the board so that by the end of this video you will have all the essential knowledge to get you playing the board game like a pro. This will help you to excel at single player games and more importantly this will also set you up nicely towards understanding the more complex part of this game which is of course the AI Pro. Before we get into it please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get more content like this in the future. Also download the app which is available on iOS and Android if you are new to the game. The links are in the description to this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. From the main menu, the first thing we're going to do is click on single player. And then we'll select the first game, which is also the first level. First, let's talk about the layout of the board. On the right are our pawns, as can be seen here. And on the left are the AI's pawns, as can be seen there. On the top right is our score, which has currently been displayed as 36. I shall explain a little bit later about how the scores are calculated, and this is really important in understanding how the game works. Next to the score is the number of pawns that we have left, which is currently displayed as 12. And everything I've just explained above applies to the AI, which of course is 36 in terms of the score and 12 in terms of number of pawns. As you can see at the top, our score is flashing and this is an indication that it is our turn to make a move. Because we are playing against an AI, its moves are almost instantaneous, but momentarily you can see its scores flashing during its turn. And I will demonstrate that very quickly by simply clicking on this, selecting this and making a move and you could see its score flashing at the top there before it made its move. Next, you may have noticed the change in the colour of the tiles whenever I tap on a pawn. So let me demonstrate that again. First, I will select this pawn which is in the form of a scissor. You can now see that this tile that this pawn sits on is now highlighted in blue. This indicates that this is the pawn that is currently selected. When I tap on it again, it is no longer highlighted as it has been deselected. I'll select it again, but this time I will simply tap on another pawn which automatically deselects the previous pawn. And that single tap also selects the new pawn I tapped on. Now let's talk about how to move your pawn. So we currently have this paper selected and this is highlighted in blue. In fact, we want to select the rock pawn instead, so I'll do that by tapping on it. We can see that the selected pawn has two dots filled and a third dot which is empty. We'll come back to the empty dot in a moment. The two filled dots denotes that this pawn can travel the length of up to two tiles, both forwards and sideways, but can only travel the length of one tile backwards. The green tiles that are highlighted indicate all of the tiles that can be reached by your currently selected pawn, which as we know is highlighted in blue. Let's move our selected pawn two tiles forward. Now let's tap on it again. Now you can see from the tiles highlighted in green that the pawn can travel two tiles forward and sideways but only one tile backwards. All you need to do is decide on which of the highlighted green tiles is the right place to move to and once you have done so, simply tap on your choice of the highlighted tiles in green and your pawn will move to that tile location like so. Going back to the empty dot, when your pawn reaches your opponent's base, which is any of the last line of tiles on your opponent's side, then the empty dot becomes a full dot and this increases the reach of your pawn by one additional step in all directions. So in this example, the paper is one step away from reaching the opponent's last line of tiles. So let's make the move and see what happens. 
Let's tap on the pawn. We can now see that the empty dot is now filled and we can also see that there are now more green tiles highlighted for that pawn, which in effect shows all of the tiles it can reach in a single move. In this example, we can see that it can move three steps sideways and that means it can also move three steps forward, even though we can't see that just yet, as it is at the end of the board. Also, you will see that it can also move two steps backwards. Each time your pawn returns to the last line of its own base, then it gains another empty dot. Let's see this in action in this example. We have now gained four dots. And as you can see, it is empty. In this case, the maximum number of dots we can have is four, and this depends on the level you're currently playing. That dot gets filled again by going to the opponent's last line of tiles. Let's demonstrate that as well. Once again, our pawn steps has now increased to four steps sideways and three steps backwards. The benefit of this is that your pawn can easily evade and catch opponent pawns with lesser moves. Now about the specific pawns. As you can see in this game each pawn type has a relationship to the other pawn types and these are defined as follows. Preys, Predators and Sane. This is because Paper Wraps Rock Rock smashes scissors. Scissors cuts paper. So for example, take a rock. Its prey is a scissor because rock breaks scissors. Its predator is a paper because paper wraps rock. And its same is of course the opponent's rock and the relationship is neutral. This relational dynamic is very important to the flow and strategy of the game, as well as to the value of each pawn. Take for example, if you have one rock left on the board, but your opponent has 12 scissors, Your single rock would ultimately win because your rock is the predator and all 12 scissors are the preys and will all be taken out by the rock. Whereas your rock does not have a predator on the board. This simple principle applies regardless of whether it is rock versus scissors or scissors versus paper or even paper versus rock. What is important is that relational dynamic. This relational dynamic forms the basis upon which one half of the score is calculated, which is the value of the preys your pawns can attack. Our rock gets a value of 0.5 for every scissors on the opponent's side. So in this example, let's start off with a solitary rock pawn on the board. Our rock has a starting value of 2.5. We then add a prey onto the board, which would be a scissor. Our score is increased by 0.5. If we add another scissor to the board, which again is another opponent prey, we get an additional 0 0.5 giving us a total of 1 added to our original 2.5, making the score 3.5. Going back to our earlier example of 12 scissors, which as we know also means 12 opponent preys, in order to calculate the value of those 12 opponent preys, we simply multiply the opponent's 12 scissors by 0 0.5, which gives us a value of 6 plus our original 2.5, giving us 8.5. And if there were 29 scissors, that would give us a value of 14.5 plus our 2.5 giving us 17. Let's turn the table slightly. If instead of a rock, we had a paper on the board, 
you will notice that the opponent now has an additional 0 0.5. And that is because our paper is the prey for those scissors, but it only gets 0.5. That is because there is only one prey regardless of the number of predators. On our side, our paper gets 0 points because it doesn't have any opponent preys on the board. So we now know that for every opponent prey, we get a value of 0 0.5. That is the first part of our score. The second part of calculating the value is the number of steps for every pawn you have on the board. Again, sticking with our earlier scenario, let's add a rock to the board. This rock has 2.5 dots and that gives it a value of 2.5. If a second rock is added and if that also has 2.5 dots, then both of their value adds up to 5. If a third rock is added, and it has a value of 2.5, then the total value is 7.5. Now that we have covered the two separate components of calculating the score, which are the pawn steps and the value of the prey, let's look at those two components together. Let's take the example of a typical board game with 12 pawns on each side, which means that we would have four of each pawn type being four scissors, four papers and four rocks and so would our opponent. The one half of our score would mean adding value for each of the opponent prey. As all of the 12 pawns are potential opponent preys, we multiply 12 by 0 0.5, which gives us six. Then the second part of the score, which is the pawn steps. All 12 pawns have 2.5 steps. So once again, we multiply 12 by 2.5, which gives us 30. Then we add the 6 to the 30, giving a total of 36 for both sides. As a general rule, protect your preys and attack with your predators. Neutral pawns can be good for blocking an opponent's same from attacking your my prey. Before you make a move, always ask yourself, what is the relationship of the pawn I have just selected to the opponent's pawn around it? Is my selected pawn a prey? a predator or a same or a combination of those and that should help you decide on whether to flee or attack. Having no predators for your selected pawn makes that pawn invincible. In this example there are no opponent rocks which means that our scissors does not have an opponent predator and hence the opponent paper is vulnerable to our scissors which can now very well strut around the board with impunity and take out all of those opponent preys without fear of an opponent's predator. Now you should be able to play the single player game armed with the knowledge you now have from this video. Hope you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.